wondering how you can become better at running your business? Entrepreneurship can be stressful. There's too much to do and not enough time. If you're isolated in your daily decisions, have no fear. Success and balance are possible. Welcome to the Small Business Answer Man podcast, where you master the art of running a successful business using practical advice from experts who want to help you succeed. Now, here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Well, I told you my goal this quarter was to find guests that would help you build your business in those six P areas. Well, today, one of those P's is about pricing, because you have to make profits and you have to get pricing right to get there. Well, in the first quarter, what a lot of us are doing, we're now getting those accounting numbers together because we have to submit those taxes on April 15th. Well, this year it's April 18th, but we have to submit those to be able to pay that. But I'm going to share with you a way that you can do this instead of waiting to the last minute that you can do it throughout the year. So today's guest with me is Dave. And Dave, would you share with our listeners today, what problem will you help them solve? Yeah, so we, let's let's talk about how to manage the accounting and the bookkeeping for your business. Well, that is going to be great conversation because I think it's very practical. Of course, some of us have put it off too long and now we're scrambling to get everything together. But Dave Ashworth is the co-founder of Quantify. For 10 years, Dave has helped countless business owners add a few extra hours of sleep per night, knowing they have accurate and financial information to grow their business. Prior to founding Quantify, Dave's ex expertise was utilized by one of Pennsylvania's biggest regional public accounting firms. David, it's great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited to talk about this topic because some people, you know, of course, finance, accounting, that scares them. <laughs> but business owners and entrepreneurs, this is a big issue for them because if they don't get this right, it is the one thing that will put them out of business because either they're not paying their bills or they're not getting their accounting done, or they have a big tax bill at the end of the year and there's no money left to pay it. So let's really start from a basic area, but what you've seen in your experience, Dave, where do business owners go wrong in their accounting? Yeah. I mean, I, I think to, just to start the conversation, um, you know, like you said, if, if you aren't, making money, turning a profit, have positive cash flow at some point. Now you may have some funding in the beginning. So there's some caveats to that. But if you don't have that at some point, you're just not going to have a business for, for very long. And, you know, if you look at the statistics, it's pretty staggering the amount of businesses that fail every single year. And I'm under the belief that not all of those businesses are failing because they aren't good at whatever they're getting in the business to do. They probably are really good at that, but they don't understand the finance and the accounting side of the business. They don't know how to keep track of their numbers. And then beyond that, how to use those numbers to tell the story of their business so that they can make better decisions on how to price their product or service or where to spend, where to invest money, you know, et cetera. You need to know those things. You need to have that information. And I always tell the clients that we work with that every single decision that you make in your business will have some financial impact on your business. And you need to understand what that is. Yeah, I think that's crucial. And I love talking about this topic because I'll be honest, I see that a lot with my coaching business. I work with business owners and entrepreneurs. And the challenge is I had one business owner told me one time, well, I just don't like looking at those numbers. I said, but if you don't know those numbers, it is going to be crucial because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to make, make decisions that will make you make mistakes in the business. And in myself, as when I first got in my first business, the way I got into it was the business owners received a lot of money, but they forgot at the end of the month, there's a bill for that inventory. That's right. And they've spent the money as it came in because they thought, wow, we're in hog heaven here making all this money and I'll spend it. And then the problem is you still have bills that follow up with that. So I guess from your side of it, we've talked about how accounting is so important in the knowing your numbers of your business. What would be some tips or strategies that you think business owners really need to do? Because yeah. maybe if they're not the non-accounting person, they say, yeah. well, I'm not very, I don't understand all that accounting stuff. Right. 
Yeah, so a couple things. So first, you need to decide that if is this time worth investing for you or for someone else? Uh, you know, because a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to pay so and so this much money to do it. But it's going to take you, you know, 10 hours a month to do it. Well, what is that time worth to you? Because if I went to some a business owner and said, what is 10 hours worth to you? They could probably come up with a rough idea of what that's worth. But then they're not willing to pay somebody to get that 10 hours back when it comes to the accounting and bookkeeping side because they don't see the value, but it really is their time. So I think the first thing is evaluate and be honest with your time. Do you have the time to invest into this? And is it worth it? If not, if you answer no to either of those, then it's time to look for an outside solution to handle that for you. So that's an easy answer. On the, you know, if you're going to do it internally and say, look, I have time, it's worth my time to do this right now. And that is the case for some businesses. Then one of the first things you need to do is figure out a good cadence that works for you to keep up with things. So does that mean you're inputting all your bills, uh, you know, every single Friday, you set aside a couple hours to input your bills and get your invoices out the door. Um, and then at the end of the month, you're doing your bank and credit card reconciliations and looking at your balance sheet and P&L, seeing who you owe money to, who owes you money. But you need to come up with a cadence and then you need to block that time and stick to it. Because as you know, the second that you get behind, right? So you get one week behind, and then you're three weeks behind and you're three months behind and then you're to the end of the year and you've done absolutely nothing. And then every single day it piles on, it just becomes more and more and then you're not going to go in and do it. So you have to find a good cadence that works for you to keep up with it uh, and then stick to it and guard that time and don't let anything overcome that time or you will get behind very, very quickly. Yeah. And I think that, that's a big one because number one, like I said, evaluating your time because too many people, they're spending twice or three times the amount of time that they could have somebody else do that. And a lot of small businesses, the thing they say is, well, I'm too small. I can't have somebody on my team to do that. And one thing is we know, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, there's options that you can have some people come on to just do the yep. bookkeeping functions that's available to them. Yep. But I think the other one is what you're saying is that cadence, because yep. I see that, you know, I get some services and a lot of times it's in the service-based business, that poor person that's the plumber is also, you know, the person doing the bills at night, taking all the calls and everything else. And there is no cadence there. And you'll see there will be three, four weeks, five weeks. I mean, recently yeah. I had a bill come in and I think they'd done the work like six weeks ago. Yeah. And I almost forgot all about it, to be honest. Right. And now I got the bill. The problem is if he waited six weeks to send that, well, if I wait the 30 days now since I got the bill, which I won't, but if I was one of those individuals that did, just think how long that time is. And yeah. that becomes that cash flow issues that businesses have that they don't realize where they could kind of have that service provided for them and they're going to help their cash flow move through the organization. Yeah, for sure. And we talk about cash flow a lot in our business. You know, how do you speed up money that's coming in and how do you potentially slow down, not hurting people, but how do you slow down cash that's going out the door? Even a few days on either end uh, can make have a huge impact on the business, but you also need some vision into okay, what what am I going to owe two weeks from now, three weeks from now? Because I may have a bunch of money sitting in my bank today, but if I owe somebody ninety percent of that three weeks from now, I really don't have that money, much money in my bank today. Uh, and then you start spending what you don't have, then you get into problems with cash flow. You know, we always say cash is king, right? And if you don't have it in the future, that's when businesses fail. They just can't, you know, you get to a point where you can't pay your vendors and the people that you owe money to. Unfortunately, you're just not going to be around very long, no matter how good you are at what you do or how good your business is. If you, if you get into trouble like that, you just won't last. Well, let's be honest, there's some people in that situation right now, because it is coming up on tax time. You know, we're still in the first quarter, but people are going to have to pay those taxes. And a lot of them, they're going to be set up, maybe that they pay it personally, yep. but they're wanting that to come out of the business, but they've never saved for that this year. 
and tax man comes April 15th. Like I said, in the opening this year, it's April 18th. Um, that's there, but that's going to come and you've got to be able to have that cash flow there. And I guess, how would you share with people to think about those expenses where, you know, looking at the receivables, looking at the payables and knowing what's coming up to be able to watch their cash flow statements? Yeah. So, well, first of all, the tax one is a big one, um, which, which you mentioned, you know, when, when you bring money into the business and then, it, you know, if you're a partnership or an S corp, you're taking it personally, you'll, you'll be taxed personally, but that amount that you bring in personally, you're, you're not getting to keep all of that. So, and that's where a lot of people miss the boat. They take this distribution. They think they're keeping it all. They spend it, get to the end of the year. And uncle Sam comes knocking for his 20, 30, 40% of that. And you have 0% left. That's a big problem. So that's one to keep, keep in mind for sure. Um, but something very simple exercise is just like what we would call like a cash flow forecast. And a lot of times we'll do it on a weekly basis. So just put week one here, take, you know, again, there's some guesswork, right? It's not going to be perfect, but how much money do you expect to bring in in a certain week? How much do you expect to go out? Look at your current bank balance and see where it's at and then project out, you know, a typical one. We'll do like 12 weeks out. And then we'll update that every week and you'll be able to see, okay, my bank balance is here in week one. The next week I have this much coming in, this much going out. My bank balance will be here. Look across that bottom line. And if you see a negative somewhere, you know, you need to make a change because you're not going to have enough money in your bank at, in that particular week. But if you can look into the future and see that, then you can make a change today and say, okay, if I'm going to be negative a thousand in week seven, then I better either make a thousand dollars more in weeks one through six or spend a thousand dollars less or I'm going to be in trouble. So having that like picture of what is coming and looking ahead a little bit uh, can really keep you out of a lot of trouble. And again, it's not going to be perfect. We don't know what's going to happen in the future perfectly, but a lot of times we can get pretty close and avoid some major, major problems. Yeah. I talk a lot about just planning and basically what that is, yeah. it's planning. It is. And I talk about it even on in the workflow, you think of what you're going to get accomplished this week. If you're planning that, and I talk to so many people about doing a weekly plan and then a daily plan. And basically, this is your financial weekly plan is to yep. update that to know where you're at. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Dave, the other thing I was looking at your website, and I saw an interesting article that you had on their recent blog post. And you were talking about five ways to better manage your bookkeeping. And, yep. you know, sometimes we think it's so common, but what are the things that you kind of visited with and shared about in that article? Would you share some of that? Yeah, for sure. I have it up here. So I'll, I'll go through these really quick. So the first is make sure that you separate your business and your personal. Uh, so you should have separate bank accounts, separate credit cards for the business. As soon as you start intermingling, it becomes really hard to keep track of your accounting because then you're say you're trying to figure out okay was this business was this personal it just becomes a mess and then also not even to mention the legal side of it talk to your attorney and ask them why that's a problem because there's a major problem uh, so that's the first thing and with um, that let me jump in on that yeah. is do that right away I don't care yes. if it's a side hustle hundred percent. Do it right away and separate it. And if your bank charges fees and if you got to look for somebody else or whatever you got to do, but yes. get those separated out. That is a number one. I'm 100%. so glad you started with that. And Thank that you. not only is like helps your bookkeeping, your accounting, but there's a lot of other things that go into that. That's a no brainer. Uh, the next one I talked about was doing your weekly bookkeeping, which we talked about getting into that cadence. What is that cadence? And it might be different for you, but figure out what that looks like. Uh, the third one is using the right accounting software. Uh, we use QuickBooks. There's other ones. Maybe it's just Excel for a period if you're just starting out, but use something to keep track of your income and expenses. Um, how can you also, number four is utilizing different technology. So, you know, whether that's payroll, things on the accounts payable side, the invoicing side, there's so much cool technology out there that can make your, your accounting so much easier. So look into some of those solutions and talk to people. What are they using? Because um, there is things that can can make that a lot more efficient. And then the fifth one is potentially hiring a bookkeeper. Um, you know, if this is something that seems overwhelming or you don't have the time or you feel like your time is better spent 
running the business, growing the business, then just hire somebody to come in and do that. Um, you don't need to hire a full-time person. It could be a firm like ours. It can be a part-time bookkeeper, whoever, just somebody to kind of handle that for you so that you can go and spend your time uh, somewhere else. Well, and that's such an important part now is that we don't realize is, and I know your firm does some of this, Dave, is, but where you can have somebody just do your bookkeeping services. And if you have the right software, everything works together. So they don't have to be in the market that you live in. And I know yeah. I've got get, uh, people that listen to this podcast in all 50 states, but also other countries. So the thing is, is they don't have to be located right there because everything can be electronic. Yep. Um, on that. And I know QuickBooks has got their program where it's in the cloud yep. and it gives you that opportunity and it really makes things, simplifies these things. Yep, for sure. Yeah, we 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 work with clients and a lot of companies work with clients all over the country, utilize a lot of cloud technology so you can really work anywhere and it's pretty seamless. Yeah. Okay. My last question for you as we kind of start to wrap up but share with others is, what do you see from business owners or challenges that you see facing business owners more as they're starting to go remote and know they need to? And, you know, I kind of throw this out for two reasons, because of what we just talked about, some people are still afraid saying, well, you know, I like to be able to drive over to my bookkeeper and just be able to talk to them. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is you can't always find those in your marketplace. But also, what other challenges do you see facing business owners as they think about remote? Yeah, and I think there's some of that. Um, I, I I personally believe that with with that side of it, which you just mentioned, um, you know, people get really comfortable in doing things a certain way and change can be scary. So if you've had a bookkeeper in your office for the last 20 years and they leave, uh, you know, you changing to something remote is a scary option. Um, but it may be the best option. You may get the most talented people who can do the best job doing it remote. And it also like opens up the market to work with people anywhere, right? So you can get more competitive rates. You can get more talented people because you can work with people all over. You don't have to work with the three accountants that are in your town that are all competing with each other, you can work with anybody. Uh, so I think that's a big deal. Uh, I think just a general point, this isn't really accounting related. And this is a conversation that I have all the time. But when we're talking about remote, I think the biggest challenge that business owners face is how to uh, build and nurture company culture. Um, because it's it's a lot easier to do that, in my opinion, when you're sitting next to somebody, the desk over, everybody's sitting around, you can have conversations, you can interact in person. When you're a remote company, in which we are, we're all sitting at our desks all day, we interact over video calls, you know, throughout the day, throughout the weeks. But we can't have those conversations and even just conversations outside of work stuff, uh, talking about what we did that weekend. And so we've tried to do some of that, we've tried to put some things in place. So I'm not saying it's impossible to do that. It's certainly possible. But I think that is a big challenge is building, nurturing, and, and just building the right company culture that you want where you're not in the same office all the time can can be challenging. Yeah. I love what you talked about is where you can really grow the talent pool. And I think that's the other thing. Sometimes we feel like, oh, we're not a certain size, so that firm won't want us if it's accounting. If it's yeah. something else, you know, well, I can't get them. You know, it changes your pool. And the big thing is with AI and with everything's happening with artificial intelligence, let's admit, folks, and I've been in business over 30 some years, you're going to do some <laughs> sort of remote stuff. So the yeah. sooner you can get there, the better. And I keep telling people our biggest challenge right now is for a business owner who's been in business a long time is the change is the mindset has to yeah, change for sure getting over it and stuff because it's a fact of life now Dave, i really appreciate your conversation and sharing with us some of your knowledge and stuff i know um you have a call to action um you have some sort of bookkeeping course so if somebody really wants to learn more about this yeah. because they feel like they are not that accounting person share with them what the bookkeeping course is and how they can access that yeah, so my my partner and I, we've been offering these services to businesses for, for over a decade now. Uh, but the one group in the small business community that we've struggled to serve for a long time is more of a, a startup company, a smaller company. 
that just isn't quite ready to invest in working with a company like ours, uh, but they don't really have any direction. And so we decided to basically build a course. We call it the DIY bookkeeping course. It's, it's on our website um, to teach people how to do their own bookkeeping. Uh, and it basically walks them through exactly what we would be doing for them. So we give everything that we do um, and we teach you how to from soup to nuts. So if you know nothing about bookkeeping or accounting, we'll teach you how to set things up. We'll teach you um, how to enter things, how to reconcile things, how to look at your balance sheet and your P&L, what to be looking for. Basically from beginning to end, doing it all, uh, we walk you through step-by-step step of exactly how to do that. So there is the there is the um, the course on our website. Again, it's called the DIY Bookkeeping Course. Yeah, and you can check their website at thequantifygroup.com and we'll have that in show notes. I'm not going to try to spell it out yep. and everything, but just check our show notes, smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Um, we'll have it in there. You can click right on it. Or if you're on your iPhone or whatever phone you're on, you can scroll down and you'll see that that link's right there to take you right to their website. But that's a good thing to do. And I would I would challenge people that even think they understand it to go through the course. It's a small price to pay to really start to understand it. Because if you know your financials, I can guarantee you, I would say 80% of businesses fail in this area of financials when they fail as a business. Yeah. Because they don't take care of the money and then they can't pay the people or they can't pay the inventory. And then of course, what has to happen? They have to shut their doors. Okay. And if you take care of the money side, I've seen it too many times. If they take care of that, they're going to have a successful business that's there. And Dave and M, of course, you can go on their website. They'll show you how they work with them. As he told you, you, you can work remote with them. So they have the remote option available there and all the information and great website that he's got that really breaks it down. And if you want to reach out to them, um, just you jump on the website, thequantifygroup.com and yep. check them out. Dave, I have one more question before I let you go. Cool. I ask each guest this and stuff. What would be your best business tip or advice that you would give the business owners and entrepreneurs? I would say the biggest thing is just don't lose sight of building your network. Um, and I tell that to, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs, but I tell that to, you know, our team as well is if you have a strong network and you have a lot of people that you know that support you, you can really go wherever you want to go. Yeah, I, th it sounds crazy to say this, but like if I left my business tomorrow and I wanted to start something new, I feel like I've built up such a good network of people that um, just enjoy working with me, that like me, that I like them. I feel like I could have success starting up something tomorrow because I have such a strong network. Uh, not because I'd be really good at doing something else, but it's it's all these people that I know that I know would support me. And so I just encourage everybody to just, regardless of what role you're in or what you're doing, just keep, continue to build that network, continue to meet people, build relationships. That is what, it, in my opinion, that is what's going to carry you through, you know, the the tough times, the good times, wherever you end up. Um, you know, that that's something that I can't stress enough. That's great advice, Dave. And one thing about it, I love an authentic person that talks about something that he does. Because I want you all to know, Dave and I met on LinkedIn. He reached out to me, and maybe it was to see if there was some business connection there. But we just had a call the first time where we connected was just talking about the topic of finances. And guess what I did? I said, hey, Dave, how about getting on my podcast sometime? Today, we're cutting that podcast from that you know, and I don't know what comes from this. And my hope is somebody picks you up on the services or buys the online book cooking course or what, but he was willing to do that because why? He's built the network. And what have I done now? As I know, now I've got a resource for that. So I think that's the key. So I truly appreciate you sharing that and yep. being authentic in it because you're actually doing it. Dave. I do. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely have lived it. I've done, been in business for, like I said, over a decade. And most of the time that I've spent is just meeting people, building relationships. Uh, and, and that's quite honestly what has gotten me where I'm where I'm at today. Well, you can see why you're successful. Again, check out their website, thequantifygroup.com. Dave, it's been great to have you on the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been awesome.
Okay, so I always say, what's one action you can take when you leave this? Because otherwise, you're going to move on. So the problem is, is as a business owner and entrepreneur, I know for probably close to 90% of you, that is not an area that you feel comfortable in. So I either tell you, number one, figure out what you're going to do to become comfortable, or I'm going to suggest maybe go get that course and go through that and see what are you getting from your people now if you have somebody in place and then decide what you need to do to change that, to be able to get the right numbers, the right information, getting that cash flow statement that's there. The other thing is, if you don't have that person and you're sick and tired of spending your time at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, trying to get the bills out or to pay the bills, then maybe check out the Quantify group and check them out and see if they're, it would be worthwhile for you to hire them. So Come back next week and we will have another great podcast. But remember, we're trying to really tie in this first quarter of how you can improve your business. Because whatever we do this first quarter, that makes a big compound effect for the rest of the year. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week. That's all the time we have for this week. To continue your journey, head over to smallbusinessanswerman.biz to access the tools and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone who would benefit from listening. That's smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Until next time, remember, when you find the right solutions, your business grows and you get your time back.